seen uh, tons of experience trading the markets. Guys, this is a real treat. Jake Bernstein is from tradefutures.com. So Jake, uh, you're, uh, whenever you're ready. Thanks, thanks for having me. Can you hear me? Awesome, perfect. Can Thank you, you so me? much, Jake, for accepting our invitation. Thanks for giving me an invitation. And uh, can you see my screen? Perfect. Okay, so let me go full screen on this. Yeah, uh, uh, Jake, you sound a little quiet to me. Is, it, is that what you were hearing too, Anka? Um, Jake, can we do a, a sound test again? How about now? Um, it's good on my end. Yeah, that's Maybe? yeah, that's better. Okay. Okay, so we're okay. Yeah, yeah. sounds good. Okay, hang on one second. Okay, should be full screen now, right? Yes, everything is perfect. Okay, good. So first of all, thanks for inviting me. I appreciate the opportunity. And I do not have any flight plans for you today. I have no special offers. I have no big deals. I'm not a pilot. But I will say this. Some of the absolute best mentoring students I've had in the 52 years that I've been trading have been pilots. Why? Because with pilots, there's only three possibilities. You take off, have a safe landing. In other words, you made a profit. Take off, crash, you lose a leg, but you get to fly again because you had a stop loss. Number three, you crash and die. So pilots understand that. And I think that was an excellent presentation. But I have something a little bit different for you. Because I've been trading for 52 years, I have made every mistake in the book. It took me 15 years, that's one five years, to learn how to trade because nobody wanted to teach me anything. And the books that were available were worthless because they were interpretive, subjective, analytical, and not rule-based. I am a fact-backed, rules-based trader. I just want the facts. I don't care what Trump does. I don't care about interest rates. I don't care about the fundamentals. I care about making money. And I'm way too old to work too hard. I want to get the mostest return for the leastest work. I'm going to show you a number of ways in which to do that. And for those of you who've seen my presentation before, it's going to be very similar. But remember, the more times you're exposed to valid concepts, the more they mean to you and the more likely you are to do them. So let's go to the first slide, which of course is the required disclaimer. And here we go. So I have a couple of choices. In 45 minutes to an hour, I can teach you a couple of things that leave you asking more questions, wanting more information, not giving you the important details. You get confused and I say to you, guess what? I confused you, but you can buy something from me that's gonna unconfuse you. That's the normal way people do things. I can teach you a few things extremely well so that you're gonna see the value and importance of what I have to show you. So I'm gonna choose, choose, choose option number two to teach you a couple of things really well. I'm not gonna tout my reputation, my experience and all the rest of that stuff. You can read it all here on this slide. I've been on Wall Street Week, CNBC, CNN, written 45 books blah, 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 blah. In fact, I have a new book, which you can see on my website. It's called My 27 Most Important Lessons in 52 Years. If you're interested in what I do, go to my website, trade-futures.com or jakestradingstrategies.com. You'll see all about me. And as I said before, no special offers, no big discounts, just the facts. That's all I care about. Let's talk about those facts. If you're a new trader, you go to the internet and you say, I want to learn how to day trade. You put in the request in Google and you say, teach me day trading. You will get literally 80 million hits. 80 million hits, can you believe that? Well, what's the new investor gonna do, the new trader? They're gonna say, where do I start? 
What do I do? You're going to be distracted by all the special offers, by all these people here at the bottom who are willing to teach you how to trade. They're always willing to teach you how to trade. But the question is, how do you know what's good? How do you know what's bad? I'm gonna give you some simple rules. And if you can walk away from today with these simple rules, you will have benefited from me and it will have cost you nothing. So why do I teach and practice fact-based, fact -back, rules-based trading? Because it works. I like to make money by using facts and knowledge because facts and knowledge create discipline and confidence. I'm not an artist. I don't interpret anything. I don't analyze. It's very simple. I test patterns that make money with high odds. How do we do that? It's really simple. We have a computer. We have many computers. We go to the computer. We use science, logic, and statistics to give me the edge in trading. We focus on a target, and then we hit the target because we have focus. Look, most of the stuff that people do these days is worthless, gibberish, nonsense. I know that because I've seen it before. Let me share something with you. I'm gonna give you the seven F words of trading. And the reason I say that is because if you listen to this list, and you follow this list, it's going to automatically eliminate a lot of problems you may have. So here's the thing. If you're a new trader and you're not making money, this will help you. If you're an old trader, you've been trading for a while and you're frustrated, you work real hard, but you're not making any money or you're not making enough money, this will help you. If you're making money and you wanna make more, this will help you. So let's talk about this briefly. And then we're gonna to get to the facts, number one. First F word is you have to find the right trades. That's the biggest challenge. How do you find the right trades? There's a million ways out there to find the right trades. I will focus and show you one very specific high probability way. Number two, you have to fact check. Did you get the details right? I'm gonna show you a trade that's coming up next week and we'll find out if you got the details right. Number three, you have to filter for risk. What the previous Mr. Top Gun said was very, very true. If the risk is too rich for your account, you can't take the trade. It's really simple. I love the 5% rule he talked about. I use the same rule. If you're gonna risk more than 5% on any trade you take, by which I mean 5% of your account size, you're risking too much. What's gonna happen is this. Not only is the risk gonna to be too big for your account, but this, it's gonna scare the hell out of you. Another rule I have is this, don't take a trade that scares you because if it scares you before you start, you're gonna make a mistake. You're gonna get out too soon. You're gonna get out too late. You're gonna to add to a losing trade. Don't take trades that scare you. Filter for risk. Decide on your risk level before the trade happens. And then if it's too risky, don't take it. Even if it's not too risky for your account and it scares you, don't take it. Follow through. Follow through with profit maximizing strategy. Many times I get calls from people that say, hey, you know what, Jake, I'm a really great trader. Joe, what makes you a great trader? I know when to take my losses. That's complete nonsense. <laughs> Even if you know when to take your losses, if you don't know what to do with your profits, you're screwed. You have to be able to maximize your profits. 80 to 90% of your money is gonna be made on 10 to 20% of your trades. It is a fact, it is a fact. If you don't know how to take that trade and turn it into a big trade, it's not gonna work for you. People say, I'm a day trader, I wanna make $500 a day. When I make $500 a day, I quit and I'm done for the day. How stupid, you don't wanna make $500 a day. You wanna make as much as you can make in one day. If you wanna limit your loss to $500 a day, that's great, but don't limit your profits. And the problem with day trading is this, even though I wrote the four best selling books on day trading for McGraw Hill, the problem with day trading is it limits your profits. So you have to maximize your profits. The next thing you wanna do is, once you're in a trade, you want to finalize that trade the right way, by which I mean, get out of the trade when you're supposed to, go into the follow through method and use your follow through. If you're keeping good records, which you should do, 
you want to know if you made a mistake. There are two kinds of mistakes in the markets, what I call the smart mistake and the dumb mistake, the smart mistake. You did everything you were supposed to do. You found the trade, you fact-checked it, you filtered it, you followed through, everything right, but you lost money. Smart loss. You did everything you were supposed to do. You had discipline, you lost money. Hey, we don't win all the time. Don't confuse excellent with perfect. We don't do perfect. I have no perfect for you today. The smart loss, you lost money because it didn't work. The system wasn't perfect. The dumb loss, you broke the rules. You got in too soon. You got in too late. You didn't do what you were supposed to do. You lost money. You deserve it. It's a dumb loss. So you have to fix the mistake if there was a mistake and you lost money. The next thing you got to do is formulate your next actions. Figure out what you're going to do next. If you follow the seven F words of trading, it will help you if you're not already doing that. Let's go to the next slide. Let me show you a trade that's coming up and let's talk about specifics. I'm a numbers guy. I've only made money by being a numbers guy. I have a trade for you. One of the best books ever written on trading was written by a man named Art Merrill, M-E-R-R-I-L-L. -L. It's called The Behavior of Prices on Wall Street. You can probably get it pretty cheap in the library or uh, cheap online or in the library. Merrill did something unique in the 1950s. He studied numbers. He went back and looked at the Dow Jones all the way back to 1880 and asked the question, has there been a tendency for the stock market to go up on the day before Thanksgiving? He answered yes. In fact, he found that going back and looking at all the major US holidays, 4th of July, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, Easter, April, um, uh, Easter, um, Independence Day, Veterans Day, and so forth, there was a pattern. That pattern was about 73%. About 73% of the time, the US stock market closed higher on the day before the holiday. That could occur by chance once in 10,000 times, so it's a fact. So let's talk about the trade. I'm gonna show you how people screw up. Here's the trade, and this is an example of what I mean by fact-based trading, fact-backed rules-based trading. This year, Thanksgiving falls on the date, Friday, Thursday, the 28th of November. The rule is very simple. Buy on the close of trading Tuesday the 26th, get out on the close of trading Wednesday the 27th, which is the day before Thanksgiving. Very simple. How do people screw up? Invariably on Wednesday morning, you'll get a call. Someone will say, or an email, they'll say, well, it's Wednesday. Should I wait till the end of the day? I say, yes, that's the rule. What kind of an order should I use at the end of the day? Market on close. What should I do? Buy the Dow, the Dow futures, or the diamonds, or the S&P, or a proxy. Can I do it now? Why do you want to do it now? Because the market's down a bunch, and I think I, I, think I can get a better price. No, the rule is the rule. Well, when should I get out? And this goes on and on and on and on. The next day, the market opens higher. I get a call from usually from the same person. They say, should I get out now? No. Why not? I'm making money because it's not the end of the day. What if by the end of the day, it's losing money? If you're scared and you have multiple positions, take some money off the table, place a stop at break even, and let it go. Get out on the close. Why on the close? Because that's the rule. Why is that the rule? Because that's the way it was researched. And this goes on and on and on. Then at the end of the day, the trade's making big money. They say, you know what I'm gonna do, Jake? What are you gonna do? I am gonna keep this trade. Why? Because I am the greatest trader in the world. I've now made a really bunch of money, a big bunch of money on this trade. And on Monday, on, two, on Thursday, even though the electronic, the regular market is not open, the electronic market is, it's gonna open higher and I'm gonna get out then. But why are you going to do that? Because that's the rule. Because that's it. Because the rule is to get out. So here's the rule. It's really simple. Buy on the close of trading. 
Wednesday, get out on the close of trading Thursday, risk the largest range day of the previous 10 days. So whatever the largest range day is, that's gonna be your risk. If that risk is too high, there's no trade for you. Very simple, and there it is. Fact backed rules-based trading, going all the way back many years with 73% odds. Can we do better? Is it possible that there's a relationship that goes even further? Is it possible that prior to this coming Wednesday, it starts to go up? That's very, very easy to figure out. We go to the computer and we ask the question, research. I go to my computer and I ask the question, in the month of November, has there been a pattern in stock index futures since the start of trading in the 1980s that has been correct 80% of the time or more with high odds and high average profit per trade? Computer thinks, and I do this at one of my websites, seasonaltrader.com. Computer says, yes, you submitted your request. You wanted to risk no more than 5%. You wanted to get in sometime in November. You wanted to get out sometime in December. You wanted a trade that lasted less than 25 days. This is what I have for you. I have facts for you. Fact, fact, rules-based trading. What are the facts? I'm getting, someone have their microphone on here? I'm getting some feedback. Anybody there? Okay, so here we go. And again, I want to impress upon you. This tells me everything I need to do. No guarantees. Remember, 81% accuracy is not 100% accuracy. So even though I've got here, I'll show this to you. 81% odds of success. 81% is not 100%. Risk, 3%. 3% of what? 3% of the closing price in S&P futures on the date of entry, November the 20th. What if November the 20th, the market is closed? No problem. Execute the trade on the close of trading the next business day. What's my average profit? My average profit in percent is 2.46%. Here's my average loss. What's my average profit in points? 19.83 points. In S&P, that happens in one day. So here's the trade. Do I know everything I need to do? Yes. March futures. S&P 500, mini, long position, date in, date out, exact time of day, PL ratio, what does that mean? The sum total of all the winning trades divided by the sum total of all the losing trades, 17 times bigger than the losing trades. So it's a 17 to one ratio. 14 consecutive wins, Never lost money more than twice, and it has a history. What is the history? Right over here. Every single year back to 1983. So we're talking almost 40 years of history. So I want you to compare what I'm showing you here, which is fact-backed, rules-based, to the kind of nonsense you hear almost every day all over the internet. You know, suddenly, the newscasters on CNBC who used to be commentators five years ago, they're market experts now. They talk about the golden cross, the death cross. They talk about all kinds of things. They have no idea what it means, nor for that matter do they have the facts. I like the facts. So here's the facts. Every year for this strategy, November 20th, December the 4th, Will it work this year? Hey, I'm not smart enough to know that. I'm not psychic, but I do know this. Check this out. This is the result, profit or loss. The last time it lost money was back here a few years ago, but previous to that, every year, all the way back to here, it made money. Now, let's talk about psychology. Here's the results again. The histogram, year by year, right over here the cumulative profit. So let's talk about psychology. The average person, and believe me, I know psychology, 
My first job out of college was working in a mental institution with psychotic patients. People say I still do the same work now, but I get paid better. So let's talk about it. Psychology. The average trader is going to look at this trade and they're going to say, it's not going to work this year. It's been too good. It's made too much money for too many years. It's not going to work this year. It's time for it to take a breather. I say, why? They say, well, look around. We've got Trump. We've got problems in Iran. We've got problems in Iraq. We've got problems in the Middle East. We've got the Israelis and Hamas throwing rockets at each other. We've got problems with Russia. We've got problems in Hong Kong. It can't possibly work this year. The question is not whether it's going to work this year. The question is not where there's problems. The question is the facts. What are the facts? What is the risk? If the risk at 3% of the closing price of S&P futures on the entry date is too high, no problem. You can do an option, a call option. You can do an option spread if you want to. You can do UPRO, which is a proxy. You can do the spider. You can do a binary option, higher or lower. You can do a number of things to adjust the risk to your level of tolerance. Someone else will look at this and they'll say, well, look at this, look at the bottom chart here. The cumulative profit as of last year was better than ever before. And so it's due for a correction. Excuse me, what the hell does that mean? I don't know any of that stuff. I just know the numbers. So let's talk about this for just a minute. What I gave you today is 100% fact-based. You can read this later. In fact, you can read this while I'm talking to you. Most of the people that I deal with will not make money. Not because they're not smart, not because they haven't been successful at their business, but because number one, they don't have a trading model, which I'm gonna share with you today. Number two, they don't have fact-backed trading methods. Number three, they don't know what the hell they're doing because they don't have specific rules. This letter is very typical of what I get. People say, I'm not making money because I'm not disciplined. Jake, help me get discipline. I wrote these books for John Wiley and Sons. These books talked about discipline and trading discipline, how to get discipline how to look at it from the psychological point of view. I have news for you folks. Discipline is worthless unless you have a good training methodology. For you to have discipline with something that doesn't work means you need a shrink. How can you get discipline if, keep, if what you're doing keeps losing money? You need to find methods that work. Discipline comes from confidence. Confidence comes from knowing what you're doing. Knowing what you're doing comes from facts. So we deal only in facts. And so think about this. This is, excuse me, but this is the kind of crap that you get on TV. Business TV report, I'm gonna to read to you. So where do you think the stock market goes from here? Brokerage analyst says, even though prices are making a standard bear market recovery, and I highlight this in red to show you that we don't know what it means. What is a standard bear market recovery? Ask 10 people, you'll get 10 different answers. It looks like the market wants to go higher from here expecting the Fed. Looks like, what looks like something to me may look like something entirely different to you. How does the market know what it wants to do? Is the market a breathing living entity? Expecting the Fed, how do we know what to expect from the Fed? Because they are thinking, how do we know what the Fed is thinking? that inflation is under control. What does inflation under control mean? And this goes on and on and on with all these conditional statements that confuse the hell out of people. And then it ends up with this. Of course, geopolitical events could change this forecast dramatically at any time. So they're basically saying all this meaningless stuff and confusing stuff. And then they're saying, and it could all change any time. So you get this all the time on business TV. And here's another one. You can read it when you have time. In fact, we'll be glad to send out the presentation to you. So let's go on to the next step. People love stuff 
that is not specific because it's interpretive. I have no time for interpretation. I'm an old guy. I need to make the most amount of money with the least amount of work. I want you to think about this. And if there's anything you come away with from today's presentation, other than the very importance of specific seasonality, exact seasonality, which is only one of the five methods that I use, use this list. I respectfully submit to you, if you know everything on this list I'm about to show you, you're gonna make money. If you know half of the stuff on this list, you will probably make money. But if you don't know at least a third of the stuff on this list, you will probably not make money now or ever. And if you do make money, you're gonna give it all back. So think about this. Here's what you wanna know about trading. Number one, you wanna know which stock, options, Forex, commodity that you wanna trade. You wanna know that. What is it you wanna trade? You wanna know whether to buy or sell or spread. You wanna know the exact time of day or price to buy or sell short. You wanna know your average profit and your average loss of that strategy. The stop loss or risk, the profit to loss ratio, the complete track record, your average profit and your average loss in points and percents. So let's stop here at number nine. Look in the mirror, be honest with yourself. How much of these things, how many of these things do you actually know about the trades you've been making? If you don't know at least half of them, shame on you. If you do know them, how about the rest of them? The largest profit or largest loss, the maximum drawdown, the maximum upswing, and the list goes on from there. The number of consecutive losses, consecutive profits. Let's talk about this one for a while. The number of consecutive losses. Why is it important? It's important because of this, and this is a fact. Most traders, cannot stand losing money more than three times. Most people can't lose money more than two times before they give up. Imagine this, a new trader comes into the market, they, they saw the E-Trade commercial, don't get mad, get E-Trade. <laughs> they get E-Trade, they start trading. They haven't the slightest idea of what the hell they're doing. They lose money the first time. They say, well, I can accept losing money the first time, that's not unusual. I'm gonna do it again because I have discipline. They make another trade, they lose money. They say, well, it's not a guarantee. I lost twice, I'm gonna do, you know, I have discipline, I'm gonna do this the third time. They do it a third time, they lose money. They say, hey, you know what? This isn't funny anymore. I don't like this. I'm gonna go back and look at the three things that I just did. You know, if I had done this just a little bit differently, it would have worked. Now they change their strategy. The fact of the matter is this, even the absolute best trading strategies will lose money six times in a row. If you're not prepared financially or psychologically to lose money six times in a row, you're probably not gonna make money ever. So think about that. Determine that in your strategy. How are you gonna determine that in your strategy? You're going to back test your strategy. So it's one thing to say, I've got this option that made $40,000. The question is, how often has the strategy worked and what happened before that? So you wanna know how to maximize your profit, how to minimize your loss, when to move your risk effectively to zero and all of these things on this list. So let's go back to the seasonal trade but that I showed you back here. Does this seasonal trade tell you everything you need to know? Let me show you. Let's go back just a little bit. Come on, computer, faster. Does it tell us what to trade? Yes, S&P. When to get in, when to get out, stop, risk, max consecutive winners, max consecutive losers, average profit per trade percent and points, stop loss, number of trades, track record, history, every single trade. So I respectfully submit to you, this is what you wanna do rather than the nonsense that most people will tell you to do. Okay, let's go forward. Moment, please. Let's talk about something else. Let's talk about charts. 
people send me charts, I get charts like this from people. I look at it and I say, excuse me, what the hell does this mean? What is this parabolic thing on the bottom? What is stochastic K? How do I know how to use this? This is a confusing hot mess to me. Don't do it. You will lose money. Don't do it. The fact of the matter is that most of these indicators are the same because they are all derived from price. So when you get a piece of software and it says, we've got 114 different indicators, and you look at an indicator and you say, it's going up. I'm going to confirm this by using RSI. It confirms it. Look at another one. I'm going to confirm this by using stochastic. It confirms it. All of a sudden you're saying, hey, this is great. I've got 11 indicators all pointing in the same direction. Good news is they're pointing in the same direction. The bad news is they're all basically the same. They're derived from price and they all look the same. So let's talk about this. You've got the seven F words. Let's talk about your trading model. If you learn the trading model and you consistently apply the trading model, it will work for you provided you're using the trading model with the right setups. So the first thing you need is a setup. What's a setup? Setup is a pattern. The thing I showed you about Thanksgiving is one of many patterns. At seasonaltrader.com, I've got millions of patterns exactly as I showed you. Entry, exit, complete track record, all the facts. That's just one setup. There are other setups. We'll talk about those momentarily. Every setup has to have a trigger. So no matter how good the history of this setup is, and by the way, the fact is that most of these setups, reversal, key reversal, island top, island bottom, flags, pennants, climax bottoms, climax stops, all this stuff, the cup and the handle. If you put them on the computer and you ask the question, does it work? The answer will be no. Finding the right setups is like finding a needle in a haystack. Once you've found them, you back test them, you apply a trigger that says, this pattern has occurred 78% of the time in the last 2,000 trades, in the last 2,000 instances of this pattern. But if you added this one more feature, which is a trigger, it increases the probability. That's what you need. And then the last part is follow through, which consists of knowing when you're wrong and maximizing your strategy. So we looked at a number of things, the 50 and the 200 day moving average. Let's look at that, in fact, one moment, please. Step one, set up. Step two, trigger. Step three, follow through. And of course, all the facts that relate to these. So there's some explanation here. Let's talk about that for a second. Moment, please. I'm going to skip over this for a second, and let's look at a few more facts. Okay, let's look at this. You heard about the 50 and 200 day moving average, the golden cross. The 50 day moving average goes above the 200 day moving average. What's it supposed to mean? It's supposed to mean that the market is going to go up. They talk about it on TV all the time. Then, of course, the opposite of the Golden Cross, the dreaded Death Cross. The 50 goes below the 200. That's very popular. People talk about it all the time. They say, we've pulled down to the 200-day moving average. We've pulled down to the 200-week moving average. <clears throat> and the bottom line is this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Does it work? <clears throat> Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. The question is, does it work? The reality <clears throat> can only be found by going to the computer. So let's do that. <clears throat> we go to the computer and we ask the question, does it work? That's what we have computers for, to find out the facts. Here are the facts about the Golden Cross, Death Cross, the 50 and the 200. Number one, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> if you like to be right, 27% of the time, congratulations, you found the strategy for yourself. If you like to be wrong 11 times in a row, but right only three times in a row, 
this is right for you. If you like to lose money, this is right for you. So the bottom line is this. <clears throat> if we put the strategy on the computer, it does not work. Don't use it. Let's compare. Here is the track record of that strategy going all the way back to the 1950s. So why do people like it? Number one, they don't know the facts. Number two, there was a time that it did work. And you can see that right over here. Let me put my pointer on there. It worked right over here, it made some big money. Then it gave it all back plus more, then it worked again and now it's working again, but it's giving some back. So the question is, do you like something like this? Is it gonna work for you or is it gonna drive you crazy? Is it gonna scare the day that's out of you and make you lose money? Let's compare this. I have a four day pattern with precise target, stop and trigger. 100% rule based, no judgment, no interpretation. I want you to look at this. Let's look at this track record. And I'm not gonna sell you this, it's not for sale. 200, 645 trades averaging $267 per trade with 85.7% accuracy. You say, what, only $267 per trade? I say, that's right, because the trades only last about two to three days. 26 consecutive winning trades, three consecutive losing trades. Notice the difference. It only trades 36 times a year. So what can we do with this information? The smart way to use a track record is this. If you have a strategy like this one that works, start using it after it's lost money two times in a row. Don't do what most people do, which is to jump in when things are going great. Then you get the drawdown and it scares the daylights out of you. Don't do that. So look at the track record, compare. The last time I did a presentation, the track record was right over here. Since then, it's done this. So this is what you wanna see in a track record. You wanna see drawdown and recovery, drawdown and recovery, drawdown and recovery, drawdown and recovery. That's what you're looking for. But ladies and gentlemen, you can't see this unless you see it. Don't take anyone's word for it. My rule is this, don't trade anything until you see the facts. That's why we do fact-backed rules-based trading. Let me show you a couple of more things that might be important to you. Here's the numbers. What's it done every month? Very easy, I know ahead of time when my strong months are gonna be, when my weak months are gonna be, very important for me. I look at the track record like this. I've circled these two years in red. Why? Because after two years of mediocre performance, it comes back the next year and makes its biggest profit ever. So that's typical of performance histories. Know what you're doing. So in terms of the plane analogy and Mr. Top Gun from before, yes, if you're a good pilot, you're gonna be a good trader. You need to know the facts. You will not get into a plane commercially as a passenger without knowing everything about that plane. Has it been safe? Is the pilot trained? When do we take off? When do we land? How long is the flight gonna be? Do you wanna risk money and not know these facts? It's stupid, it's crazy. That's why so many people lose money because they don't know the facts about what they're doing. Okay, so let me show you something. Let's take the big perspective. Who in this business does this? I'm not interested in how the last four trades have gone. I'm interested in the big picture. I'm interested in consistency. Dow Jones monthly average normalized price 1901 to 2017. We're talking about a long time. We're talking about over a hundred years. Who does that? Who's got the data? I do. What does it show? This period of time, beginning in mid-October to the end of the year is the most bullish time of the entire year. Now you might say, well, what if it changes? Well, what if it does? If it changes, we'll lose money. Right now, we can only go on the facts that we have. Is it possible 
to look at this more clearly. In fact, what is this chart? We've taken every year of the Dow Jones all the way back to 1901, added them all up together and showed one graph that illustrates the typical relationship during the year. This time of year, October, November, December, is when we make most of our money with the highest probability. But there are other times of the year as well. Can we find them? Sure, with a computer. Let me show you. Here's a chart of the Dow Jones 1920 to 2018. The bottom of the screen, I've got arrows up. I've got red numbers, I've got green numbers. This is a weekly chart. The chart I showed you before was a monthly chart. An arrow up with a number at the bottom right over here, I'll show you. 67% of the time, the, the price of the Dow Jones during this week, the first week of April, has gone, gone up compared to the week before. So these three arrows for me constitute a trade. I can go to the computer and ask the question. Zero in on this trade. I want to know during this period of time, the first three months of April, the exact date to get in, the exact date to get out, the stop, the risk, the profit target, everything exactly fine-tuned to take advantage of this probability. How about this? End of the year. Month of December, another good one. How about one week? first week of October. How about the pattern? So you can see that here, the pattern that's been in existence since the 1800s is still in existence now. But I can use that pattern to zero in on specifically the right trade. How about this one? Has it gotten better or has it gotten worse? This is the pattern since 1920. This is the pattern since 1980. In other words, you can see higher probability if you go to SeasonalTrader.com or any other seasonal program that you have and you ask the question, what are the best trades that I can do at this time of the year? You will get the answer and it will fulfill all of the points that I raised on my, on my list before, when to get in, when to get out, etc. Let's go further. Here is the chart from this year. This is the red line over here showing what was supposed to happen right over here. This is the red line that shows what actually did happen right over there. So this chart over here was made in 2018. It had nothing to do with what's happening now in 2019. Now look, not every year is gonna be perfect. Not every year is gonna look like this, but remember, we're playing the odds. And by playing the odds, we have the entry, the exit, we have the risk, and you don't play the odds if the odds aren't right, not only in terms of percentages, but also in terms of what you can afford to risk. So let me show you something else. At the end of each month, I go to the computer and I ask the question, show me trades for the next month. Example, I ask the question, Home Depot for the month of October, historically for the entire history of Home Depot stock, has there been anything that's been right 70%, 75% of the time or more with a risk of 5% or less with 25 days duration? computer spits out this. It shows Home Depot buying October the 27th, getting out November the 6th, etc., with all the relevant statistics, and you know the percentages are really high. At the same time, it gave me some other trades. It gave me 3M, and it gave me Ingersoll Rand, as a bunch of, and a bunch of others. So the question is, how do I know which one to take? These are all possibilities. The computer is stupid. You ask it a question, it'll give you the answer. The computer was programmed to put the best trade in the first position. Here's my 3M trade. Here's my Home Depot trade. Here's my Ingersoll Rand trade. Very simple. As I said before, it fulfills all the conditions that we have. So what happened? This was searched before the fact. So I could have the trades for October. Here is the 3M trade. The 3M trade, 3M trade said, buy on the close of trading, very simple rule, October 28th, get out on the close of trading, November 21st, or 
when you reach a profit target, average profit of 4.91%, take some money off the table and reduce your risk to zero. This is what actually happened. Entry and exit. So when it reached 5.52%, which was clearly greater than the 4.91% average profit, that trade was effectively over in terms of risk because now we have a free ride. Let's go to the next one. Home Depot. Home Depot lost money. It lost 1.94%. So we take the risk, we take the loss. In fact, the loss was taken right over here, minimum amount of money. Remember, everything we do is a question of risk to reward, a question of balance, a question of losses minus uh, profits, losses minus profits, I'm sorry, profits minus losses. It's not perfect. What about the last trade, Ingersoll Rand? Here's the Ingersoll Rand trade. The average profit per trade in Ingersoll Rand was right over here. And again, I want you to see that we knew everything we needed to do before we do it. Average profit per trade, trade on Ingersoll Rand was right over here. Let me show it to you. 3.13%. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, Jake, this is all screwed up. How come you're taking 3.13% average profit per trade, but you, I'm sorry, average profit. Oh, I'm sorry, I got it wrong. 5.56%. So let's go back to the chart. Ingersoll Rand this year reached its target. And what's my red squiggly line? Very simple. Remember I talked about profit maximizing strategy. For all I know, this stock's gonna go to the moon or it's gonna come back, I don't know. But I wanna eliminate my risk as soon as possible. Therefore, as soon as the average profit per trade is hit, and I know all these facts before the case happens, before it happens, I take some money off the table, reduce risk effectively to zero on part of my position, and then, I trail the stop. What's that red line? It's a three day simple moving average of the low. If I close below that line, I'm out of the trade. Three day moving average of the low. Why three day moving average of the low? Because it works. It ain't perfect, but it works. For a short position, it would be a three day moving average of the high. Let's go on before we run out of time. How about this? Is it possible there are seasonal patterns in other markets? Yes, here's copper. Match that all the way to 1890. Here's the family of curves showing copper last 25 years, last 10 years, last 50 years, last 75 years, 100 years, etc. Why am I showing you this? To show you there's consistency across the big picture. How do I translate in, that into a trade? Here's a copper trade that's coming up. Buying last week of December. I'm sorry, when was, let me see that. Buying into the last third week, third week of December and getting out first week of January, last week of December. So it's the last three weeks of December. That's what the chart looks like. What do we do with that chart? Very simple. We go to the computer and we search for the exact trade and here it is. December 18th through December 24th. Odds, entry, exit, profit, loss, everything. So here's another trade that's coming in February, 3M. We can find all of these and this is what the trade did last year. And let me ask you a question. In fact, let me put this back here. People say, but everything's changed. My answer is this. Is it possible that we go back to the 1900s, early 1900s, like 1920, and ask the question, has there been anything in the Dow Jones since 1920 that has been high probability? Put it in perspective. Since the 1900s, we've had several world wars, Gulf War, Desert Storm, inflation, the Great Depression of the 1920s, Inflation, disinflation, Republicans, Democrats, idiots, we've had it all. The question is, if fundamentals were important, there wouldn't be consistency, there'd be a lot of inconsistency. So here's the question, let me show you. I asked the computer, since the 1920s, 
Has there been anything in the Dow Jones that has been correct a high percentage of the time on specific dates? Check it out. October the 26th through January the 10th, if you're willing to risk 15%, has been right 83.9% of the time since the 1920s. That's very interesting statistics because it's not only accurate, but it's high probability. It's very, very likely that this occurs as not, not as a random event. You say, I don't like 15%, no problem. We can go back to the computer and ask the question, is there anything I can do for 5% risk? So we can get that answer too. So let me show you something else. We have trades like this. Now that I've brainwashed you, you can see this immediately, heating oil chart. Do I care what the market is? For me, the money is green. I'm not ready to put all my money in Amazon as my only stock or my only futures contract. I'm interested in many opportunities. Is it possible that this incredible trade in heating oil showing week after week of high probability to the upside right over here, can we fine tune it? Sure. We go to the computer, we ask the question. Let me show you. This is the month of March and April. Go to the computer and say, is there anything that begins in heating oil in the month of March that has been right a high percentage of the time? Computer pits, spits this out, gives me this trade right over here, March 15th to March 31st. So again, very important. Ask the right questions, you'll get the right answers. Follow the same strategy in terms of setup, trigger, and follow through. You get good answers and you make money. Here, for example, is the entire history. So what's important to me is this. I want to see the entire history. Super important. Let's go forward and see what else I have for you. One moment, please. Here's another trade that's coming up in the S&P with almost 80% accuracy, December 15th through December 30th. I want you to think back to what I said before. Do you remember what I said earlier in the presentation about Art Merrill, the behavior of prices on Wall Street, the tendency for markets to close higher on the day before major holidays? In this case, it would be Christmas. So I've taken that same concept, the seasonal holiday pattern, and extended it to show that as a matter of fact, the probability of higher prices begins before the major holiday and lasts until after the major holiday. So I can go to Seasonal Trader and do research and find trades that fit my specific need and my specific metric. Let me go to the next one. And here's the history of that trade. In addition to that, and here's the Christmas trade, by the way, and the Thanksgiving trade, which we talked about before. In addition to that, we can find short-term trades. Example. Here's a trade in S&P that only lasts four days. How did we find it? Again, by doing a search. That's what the result, that's what the trade looked like. And here's the history. And here's what the trade actually did this year. So one last thing. If you're familiar with the Commitment of Traders report, you know its power. If you're not, strong suggestion, Read up on the Commitment of Traders Report. The Commitment of Traders Report is issued by the US government and it divides positions and changes in positions and futures into three categories. Small traders, large traders, and commercials. I'm very interested in commercials. Who are these commercials? These commercials control about 90% of the contracts in futures. They're the biggest buyers and the biggest sellers. So why be interested in them? Because they trade for the big moves. Let me show you something. Here is a chart. Let me go forward. Here's a chart of gold. Forget about the bottom of the chart for now. Let's just look at the top of the chart. The top of the chart is the price. It's a weekly chart. The middle of the chart where this red line is, and let me show it to you right over here, is the zero line. Above the zero line, commercials are long. Below the zero line, they're short. I am not interested 
and by the way, let's, let's talk about this. Who are the commercials? In the gold market, commercials are end users, miners, jewelers, and big buyers, sovereign wealth funds, country, country wealth funds. At any point in time, if you've got, let's say, 100 commercials, maybe 50 of them are long and 50 of them are short, it'll be a net zero. But let's say that 80 of them are long and 20 of them are short, it would be a net plus. Commercials being long the market means they're interested in owning the product. Short the market means they're, they've hedged the product. I want you to zero in right over here. I'm gonna show this to you. One moment, please. Right over here. Let me go back one slide. One moment. Right over here. This was the gold chart back in October of last year. For the first time in many, many months, commercials went long gold. What? Why did they go long gold? Obviously, because they thought it was going to go up. That was the key to this great big move we've had to the upside in gold. Not a short-term move. At the same time, silver market. In my estimation, as from what I recall, this is the first time that the net long position, net position of commercials in silver has ever been bullish in the entire history of the market. And look what happened. At the same time, it only showed as a little blip on the chart right over here, but you have to look at it in terms of the numbers. And at the same time, platinum, a huge long position for commercials for the first time in a long time right over here. So study the COT, it will help you. Look at the market right now. Copper, the biggest long commercial position in copper in a long time. Who are the commercials in copper, the biggest buyers? The biggest buyers are the Chinese. Coffee futures. Coffee futures have made a big move up. Here's the chart. And by the way, there's an ETF for coffee, JO, which has done extremely well. So let me review because I'm running out of time. If you have any questions, write me, jake at trade-futures.com. My website, and website's over here on the left. Or you can write with technical questions, my key programmer, Chris Moody. Or you can go to my website, jakestradingstrategies.com, get more information on what I do. Like I said before, no high pressure, I have nothing to sell you, but if you got some great ideas from me today, it makes me happy. Use them to make money with. So Anka, if there's any questions for me, if you can relay them to me, I'd be glad to answer them. All right, Jay, thank you so much. There are a few questions. What program are you running to find the seasonal info you are presenting online? Seasonaltrader.com. All right, Joe. Uh, and see here. And can we get access to that program and learn how to run it and find our own trade, uh, trade candidates? Yes, there is a free trial. It'll show you the trades for the next three months. Feel free to use it. And if you have any questions, just write me. It's not expensive. It's not a trick. It's not a gimmick. It's all history. Okay, awesome. These were the uh, last two questions here. <laughs> Then I thank you for the opportunity, Anka. I hope you have a safe trip back from wherever you're going. Thank you so much, Jake. It was such a pleasure having you here today. It was an amazing treat. Uh, Thanks. Any Anka, if anybody wants a presentation, um, I'll be glad to send it to them if they write me an email. Awesome. So you heard it, guys. If you want a copy of the presentation, uh, you can email Jake or uh, you could go to uh, timingresearch.com and view all the recordings from today's presentations. All right. Thank you.